A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, go do whatever you have in mind for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings, and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith. 
to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God, for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it, done, may it be done to me according to your word, and the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> Do the words of this Gospel now. Do you remember when we lit the first candle of the Advent wreath this year? We said that in our parish, we're going to have the theme of hope and we started putting letters up here to match each week. And the first letter was H, and obviously pretty much stands for hope, doesn't it? That's the theme, because hope is something that we pray about to happen once a promise is made. And the promise had been made throughout the ages that a savior is going to be born who's going to take away everyone's sins and open for the salvation gates for everyone. And we heard in that opening song today, our salvation is drawing near. The celebration of the birth of Jesus is really close, isn't it? Five days, four if you count Christmas Eve, right? And we said when we lit that first candle, we're gonna hope that Advent of 2020, in the midst of every struggle that we're having to make sure that things are safe and sound and that everybody can be healthy, 
will hope that it'll be okay. Your presence here is a fulfillment of that hope. You being here says, yes, we want to hope for that. Then the next week we said, O was the letter. Could stand for a lot of stuff, but one of the things we said about hope is we're gonna open our hearts and our lives so that Jesus is the most important thing in our lives during Advent. How'd you do with that? Okay, could we do better? Probably. Your being here today is a clear sign that you're open to the power of God's Spirit as we're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Then we had the next letter, P, by that candle. So obviously the P stood for pink. Because R is for rose, right? So actually it stood for perseverance, patience, and prayer. How are you doing with that patience thing? Have you ever noticed that when this time is near, wherever you go, whether you're on the road, in the store, with your neighbor, how important patience is? You notice that? People are really impatient. Watch how they drive. Past you, zoom at the next red light. They're here and you're here. <laughs> the light turns green, wow, they're gone. Next red light, you're there here, you're here. <laughs> it's inevitable, right? Patience really pays off. Perseverance pays off. And prayer. All of those things are happening with you today by your presence here. You're being patient while I'm giving this homily. You're praying together. And we're persevering in the uh, preparation for celebrating Jesus' birth. And then we had E. So when we had the letter E, which we celebrate this week, which completes the hope theme, the fulfillment is there. And we're encouraged, encouraged to share the message with other people. How are we going to do that? This year might be the most unbelievable celebration of Christmas that we've ever had. We have to encourage people on Zoom. We have to encourage people by not being with them. We have to encourage people in the goodness of faith. It can be done. It's a struggle, but it can be done. Hope is realized. In our gospel reading today, we hear the story of the Annunciation, the fulfillment of the promise of the hope of salvation. And Mary says, how can this be? That's a pretty normal reaction, right? An angel appears to you and says, something absolutely unreal is going to happen to you. What would you say? Whoa. Then she says, she's told by the angel, your relative, who's way beyond childbearing ages, is going to have a baby. Mary must have said, oh, what? Well, how is this happening? The two most unlikely women to be expecting children are going to have sons. One's going to be the forerunner of the message of salvation. One is going to be the fulfillment of salvation. Wow, what a message she got. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. The Lord has found favor with you. And it's the very same message that comes to us. You're here celebrating faith, your trust in Jesus, and God is favoring us. The gift that we're given is for us to share. Now we have a few days left before the celebration of the birthday of Jesus. Does Christmas end on the 25th? No way. It's just the beginning of the Christmas season. When does the Christmas season end? Who said the birth of John, the birth of Jesus? No. The baptism, right? Baptism of Jesus, and that's on, I think, January 10th. So we have a whole season to celebrate. We have a whole season to prepare, to celebrate the hope to be realized, and then we have a season to celebrate. But in all of that, Jesus is at the center of everything. 
if over these past three full weeks, you have made Jesus the center of your life and your prayer and your concern for others, it'll be the happiest Christmas celebration you've ever had because it can only get better. Hope is realized, the promise is given, and we're saved. May God bless your week. Amen.